Anyways, let's move on. <clears throat> Finally, to some climate change news. I know, I know I've been running a little bit long today, but there was so much to talk about. This is, you know, we're just going to get into some concerning news. Uh, this is from Jeff Berardelli. Boiling water temperatures in Miami. A new record of 92.5 was set. The average is 87.5. You know what? I just actually realized that I can't go long today. This really sucks. Uh, while that kind of temperature is possible, but very rare, even in the shallow Gulf of Mexico, it's shocking to see that in the Atlantic. The water temperature measured at Virginia Key, Florida, reached 92.5 Fahrenheit on Thursday afternoon. Good Lord, the hottest ever observed since the station was in installed in 1994. Ocean water. Ocean water, 92.5 degrees. Uh, this is quite wild. <clears throat> and uh, crap, I totally uh, lost track of my schedule today. Let's move on to this. This is very concerning. Very, very concerning. Some new climate models, this is from Yale Climate Connection. Some new climate models are projecting extreme warming. Are they correct? Recent climate models are running hot, projecting catastrophic global warming. Guys, guys, this is also from Jeff Berardelli. <clears throat> Puzzled scientists are weighing whether the models need correcting or whether severe warming is a real threat. So literally, they're running these models. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to sum this article up for you. <clears throat> uh, they're running these models. The models are saying, oh my God, all these models are indicating exponential warming, extreme warming, right? They're way, way, way worse than any of the models that we've run before. And so all the scientists were like, alarmed at this and they were like oh my god this must mean the models are wrong let's change the models so they they basically like tried to add in all these other um all these other elements you know into into the models to make sure that they, you know they so they kind of reconfigured the way they were doing the models and they're like oh whoo whoo yeah whoa um good news guys it, it's not as bad as they were saying so basically, they altered the models to not be as severe, to not show a, an extreme warming event. <clears throat> can, you, can you believe this? Scientists. Scientists are doing this. Maybe I'll read a little more of this. For, uh, so for the past year, some of the most up-to-date computer models for the world's top climate modeling groups have been running hot, projecting that global warming may be even more extreme than earlier thought. Data from some of the models run, model runs has been confounding scientists because it challenges decades of consistent projections, right? So they're, they're leaving this linear, the models are leaving the linear projections that they've been using for decades, saying like, by 2100, we should see four degrees of warming, right? <clears throat> we could possibly see four degrees of warming, right? Now, all these models they've been basing their projections on. So now they're running the new models are saying like, uh-oh, uh-oh, uh, way hotter than we thought, guys, way hotter. Uh, and, and because of this, the scientists were like, oh my God, this can't be right. The models must be off. So <laughs> it's, it's crazy. It is crazy. It is concerning as it increases the risk of more severe climate change impacts, explain, explains Dr. Andrew Gettleman a cloud microphysicist scientist from the National Center for Atmospheric Research in Boulder, Colorado. As a result, there's been a real urgency to answer this important question in climate science. Are there processes in some new models that need correcting, or is this enhanced warming a real threat? I'm going to tell you what they did. They corrected the processes in the new models to make sure that it, it didn't say what it was saying. After months of contemplation and study after study, the picture is becoming much more clear and providing something of a breather. <laughs> Woo! Oh, man. It was looking really bad there, but we, you know, we, we reconfigured everything, and, uh, you know, we're good. 
Along with those studies, an unprecedented international research mis- mission led by NOAA and named Atomic aims to provide climate science with the most sophisticated insights yet into why some models point to more warming. <laughs> uh For the past 25 years, the international community has been evaluating and comparing the world's most sophisticated climate models produced, oh, I'm sorry, doggy, produced by various teams at universities, research centers, and government agencies. The effort is organized by the World Climate Research Program under the United Nations World Meteorological Organization. Climate models are complicated computer programs composed of millions of lines of code that calculate the physical properties and interactions between main main climate forces like atmosphere, oceans, and solar input. But models also go a lot further, incorporating other systems like ice sheets, forests, and biosphere, to name a few. The models are then used to simulate the real-world climate system and project how certain changes like added pollution or land use changes will alter the climate. Every few years, there is a new comprehensive international evaluation called the Coupled Model Intercomparison Project, or CMIP, in the sixth such effort known as the CMIP-6. And now underway, experts are reviewing about 100 models. Information gleaned from this effort will act as a scientific foundation for the UN's Intergovernmental Panel on Climate Change, next major assessment report scheduled for release in 2021. The goal of the report, the sixth in 30 years, is to inform the international community about how much the climate has changed and, importantly, how much change can be expected in coming decades. So they were running these models for the next IPCC report, and the models were like, "Uh, guys, we're we're screwed. That's what the models were saying. But the scientists, you know, were like, well, we we can't go with that. No, we can't. We can't bring these models to the to the IPCC, uh, you know, because then what are we going to say? What are we going to tell people? Um, you know, the truth. The goal of the report, the sixth and uh, but a bit conundrum emerges over the past six years. The CMIP six collection of models being reviewed through research is an unexpected curveball. A significant number of the climate models runs model runs showed substantially more global warming than previous model versions had projected if accurate the international climate goals would be nearly impossible to achieve or how about just take out nearly out of that sentence and there would be significantly more extreme impacts worldwide but we couldn't have that a foundational experiment and every report addresses sensitivity if you double levels of carbon dioxide co2 that were in the air before industrial revolution how much warming do the models show this doubling is not expected for a few more decades what are they talking about but it is quick, a quick way to communicate the critical role of greenhouse gases in, in a changing climate. Anyways, <clears throat> um, moving on. Uh, well, this is an interesting statement. The amount of CO2 in the atmosphere has increased by 35%. Hold on. I thought baseline was 280. We're at 420. If, if my math is correct, and I believe my math is correct, that would be 140 parts per million. So that's Half. That's 50%. So they're saying the amount of uh, CO2 in the atmosphere has increased by 35%. No, it hasn't. It's increased by 50%. So what are they talking about? Where are they getting their numbers? Why are they saying 35% in this Yale Climate Connections report? That right there in and of itself is a lie. The real number is 50%. Or, you know, very, very close to 50%. So that, you know, again, they're trying to assuage everybody's fears about, you know, exponential or extreme warming or near-term warming. Um, anyways. So they're talking about changing the sensitivity uh, to, of the earth to warming. Uh New and encouraging evidence is emerging. At first, scientists were uncertain whether new model runs were onto something, so the international modeling community dug in to produce multiple studies. The results are not yet conclusive, but a gradual collective sigh of relief seems to be materializing. Oh, well, that's good. Uh, What can you tell us, dear scientists? Evidence is emerging from multiple directions, from the models which show the greatest warming in the CMIP6 ensemble are likely too warm. Oh, 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 yeah, well. 
yeah, they were, you know, they were wrong. We didn't want to hear the, we didn't want to hear the news, so we decided they were wrong. For example, a study released April 28th evaluated the past performance of the models making up the CMI P6 ensemble. The team assessed weights, assigned weights to each model based upon historical performance of their warming projections, weighing the poorer performing models less. Okay, by doing so, both the mean warming and range of warming scenarios in the CMIP6 ensemble decreased, meaning the warmest models were the ones with weak, weaker historical performance, meaning the ones that were taking in the least likely scenarios um, or the lesser likely scenarios were, were basically cut out. <laughs> and then all of a sudden everything got better, right? We'll, we'll take these, you know, these really bad scenarios out of the equation and, all, you know, everything's fine now. Okay, we're fine. This result supports a finding that a subset of models were too warm. Okay. The conclusion is supported by another study evaluating one particular model, the Community Earth System model, that showed greater warming. Using that model, the researchers simulated the climate in the early Eocene era about 50 million years ago when rainforests thrived in the Arctic and Antarctic. The CESM2 simulated a historical climate that seems way too warm compared with what is known about that era from geological data, indicating that the model is likely also too warm in future projections. Okay. Okay. Um, there are also something about clouds. Experts conclude much of this uncer uncertainty about the probabilities lies in the complexity of clouds. We have been looking as a community at why the models with greater warming are doing what they're doing, and it's tied to cloud feedbacks in the southern mid-latitudes mostly. I find this very interesting. Clouds, clouds, clouds. Um, what about the feedback of contrails or air travel? Because that's contributing to cloud cover. Absolutely contributing to cloud cover. I wonder if they're going to ever address this. Um, sometimes they do. Once in a long while they do. In fact, a new study addressing the increased sensitivity was published, published in Science Advances, stating cloud feedbacks and cloud aerosol interactions are the most likely contributors to the high values and increased range of ECS sensitivity in CMIP6. Wow. So they're saying they don't really necessarily understand what's happening with clouds, but they're saying that that contributes to their warmer climate models. And what, what they're also saying is that one of the models shows that at higher temperatures, lower clouds, which help to cool the earth, um, lower clouds, which help to cool the earth, will evaporate, leading to higher temperatures. And we covered something about that uh, a few months ago, I believe. Hey guys, please remember to like, share, and subscribe. You can also support the channel at the links below, PayPal, Square, and Patreon. Also, um, all of my live streams are available for listening on Patreon if you happen to miss them during the day. So um, you can sign up for my Patreon for as little as a dollar. If you want to go check out the live streams, they are all there. Thanks a lot.